Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial on how to install an NVMe solid state drive into your laptop. The computer I will use to describe the procedure is the Dell G7. Before you source for a drive, confirm your system has a port compatible with the NVMe storage, as not all motherboards support the standard. The drive the Dell G7 came with was a SATA based 256 GB M.2 drive, so I decided to upgrade to a 480 GB SX 8200 NVMe drive by ADATA. In this video, I will go through the process of cloning your old drive onto the new one. Here we can see the Crystal Disk Mark benchmark results for the old SATA based drive. They are pretty decent with 515 sequential reads and 207 megabytes per second sequential writes. However, I felt I needed an improvement especially with the 4K write performance, as well as some additional space for applications. And with the dropping cost of 3D NAND flash used in SSDs, both regular SSDs and NVMe drives are more affordable than ever. I got my 480 GB drive for $110 less than half the price it was a year ago. Now, depending on the number of drive ports available on your computer, you may need an extra drive to serve as temporary storage for your files during the cloning process. In my case, the Dell G7 only has one M.2 slot and one SATA port, so I needed to use a separate hard disk drive onto which I would clone the original data temporarily. Start by shutting down your system, then open the bottom cover to reveal the drive base. Proceed to install the temporary drive into the SATA port. Close up the laptop once again and boot up the machine. Again, you can skip this step and plug in your new NVMe drive directly if your laptop already has another free M.2 slot. Once booted up, it is time to check on your drives. My software of choice for both formatting and cloning the drives is the Aume Partition Assistant and Backupper respectively, but feel free to use your own applications of choice to achieve the same results. Before you clone one drive onto another, you will need to format the temporary host drive. Because most system drives have more than three partitions, you will need to use the GPT disk standard instead of the MBR disk standard. Some programs will do this for you automatically, but it is something important that you will need to know in case you will need to do it manually. Clone the entire 
boot drive currently installed in your system onto the temporary storage device. Do not leave out any partitions as many of them are crucial to letting your machine boot up correctly. When this is done, close the cloning applications and go to your computer browser to confirm all the partitions have been ported successfully, then shut down the system. The next step will be to open the lid up once again, remove the old M.2 SSD boot drive and replace it with the new NVMe drive. The ADATA NVMe drive comes in a minimalistic box containing only the drive and the heatsink, which is to be stuck directly onto the NAND flash modules and the disk controller. To stick it onto the drive, peel away the tape cover and align it over the screw hole and the flash modules. Make sure you leave the temporary drive installed as the disk will contain the data needed to port over to the NVMe drive. Close the lid and boot up the system once again. The system should boot up from the temporary drive installed in the previous step. Once the system boots up, first go into the partitioning and formatting application where you will need to format the NVMe drive and convert it from an MBR disk into a GPT disk as earlier done for the temporary drive. Thereafter, switch over to the cloning application to clone over the entire temporary disk onto the NVMe drive.
With the cloning to the NVMe drive complete, you may now remove the temporary drive installed to make sure the system boots from the new NVMe drive instead of the temporary clone drive. Booting from the NVMe drive at this point is now straightforward. If done correctly, the system should start up normally. All your files should have been safely restored and good to go. Running a few benchmarks, beginning with Crystal Disk Mark, we can see the drive's performance is significantly better than the previously installed SATA-based M.2 drive, with 2043 MB per second sequential read and 1527 megabytes sequential write. As for the passmark results, we can see that the performance value shot up nearly four times from the original value. That said, it should be noted that the real-world difference between the two drives is negligible for most tasks, such as loading times. However, if you are a power user and have been looking to upgrade to an NVMe storage, the XPG SX8200 drive is a worthy and very affordable option. Once again, thank you all for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I will be more than happy to respond.